See both players a perfect 4-0. Ted, he is in second place on the Season 3 leaderboard, is having a good enough season. You see now has actually moved on to the 2016 leaderboard. Really, all his results started in August, though. That is he may be the best player of the last two months here on the tour. Yeah. Certainly been playing well when we had on camera and putting up a lot of wins. Ted keeping on six. Zach starts off Sacred Foundry, Swing Goblin Guide, hits for two. The card he shows is Inquisition of Kozilek. It's a good one. Does he have a Black Cleave Cliff, though, to cast it? Ugh. Uh, doing Zach's work for him. He has a one lander. It is Wooded Foothills. So it gives Zach three points of life. Ted will go to 15 there to cast the Inquisition. Lava Spike, Swift Spear, Swift Spear, Boros Charm, Boros Charm. It's a one lander from Zach. That is a glimmer of hope for Felicetti, but one more land. And this hand this really snowballs. And the thing about this is there's nothing that Felicetti can really Inquisition Zach off of. He has two Swift Spears, he just wants to commit another creature, or he can just Lava Spike if that's what he wants to do. So, so maybe you take, yeah, he's gonna take a Swift Spear. You're right, there's just not much he can take. He, he's really just hoping Zach bricks on land. Land here for Zach is huge. Does Ooh, he hit it? Looks it looks like an Atarkas command that is the opposite of a land. Swift Spear is the play. Swing for three. Ted, Seal of Fire on okay. top of the deck. That's a good pickup. If he has the red mana, it's great. I um, believe he has a Copper Line Gorge as well, which okay. is very good. Very into it. Ted draws and immediately inquisitions again. Sees the Atarkas command. Takes Lava Spike. We are on the get stuck on one land plan. Yeah. Three uncastables. Oh, oh no, no. I, I meant I meant that. for Zach. I didn't mean Ted should do that himself. I, I must have misread that hand. <laughs> this is both players getting stuck on land. Now Zach hits land two and just disaster here for Fellas Eddie. Yeah, we'll be going to two pretty quickly here. Fetches here for another for a stomping ground. Man is now online. Ted's at 12. Zach with 12 points of burn just in hand. And, you know, Swift Spear Goblin got on the table. I don't know that Ted has any live draws. Yeah, currently a Tarka's Command is a, uh, well, it's, it's more than a Lava Axe. It's Lava Axe Plus. Yeah, pumps the creatures, three damage. So Felicetti down to nine, then takes three from each. He's down to three, draws a card, game two. Uh, Zach there picking up that land before Ted could really even get off the ground. Uh, second land with that Seal of Fire might have been something, though I think that Zach might have found that land in time to make that a non-issue. Really He's quickly picks up that game. Strong show there for Burn and Zach Rapis. So look over to the sideboards. Jund frequently does not get game one in this matchup. Uh, that one certainly a one-sided affair, but let's look at the sideboard. They usually have a lot of things for this. Three Fallen Intermage, three Kitchen Finks, two Grafdigger's Cage, a Duress, a Damnation, an Outpost Siege, a Knight of Souls Betrayal, an Ancient Grudge, a Slaughter Games, and a Jund Charm. The biggest finds here are the three Kitchen Finks, the one copy of Duress, a pain-free discard effect, life gain, and a recursive blocker with the Kitchen Finks. And frequently you will see Jund players bring in Fulminator Mage in this matchup, partly because of what you just saw. Uh, Zach there only got up to two lands. A Fulminator Mage would have been able to take him off of any of the spells left over in his hand. And it also was just able to block and trade with a goblin guide if push comes to shove there. Yeah, so Finx is, Finx is good, it, but outside of that, there's not, I don't know, this seems like a kind of medium sideboard for Ted. I would have liked, if he was heavy on the burn hate, we'd see some more cheap removal on the board, which he doesn't have. Certainly. Over on Zach Rafus's side, three Path to Exile, two Core Firewalker, two Skullcrack, three Destructive Revelry, three Deflecting Palm, and two Lightning Helix. I'm not certain we see any of this. No, there's an argument for core Firewalker because a lot of Ted's removal is going to be red. You can't lightning bolt the Firewalker. You can't terminate it. Uh, it's not exceptional here. I would leave it on the sideboard. Uh, frequently, I see burn players bring in Path to Exile in any kind of Tarmogoyf matchup. I okay. think it's over sideboarding. Uh, but there are games where Tarmogoyf can dominate. One, maybe two copies of Path could be clutch in this matchup. So maybe some of that. Uh, something like Skullcrack for a Kitchen Finks too fancy? Uh, it's, it's, it's reasonable. Um, you already have a Tarkas command. You don't want to go too overboard on this kind of effect against the Inquisition of Kozilek duress deck. Right. But it is certainly a reasonable option. We'll see if he does that. Maybe something like a Boros Charm leaves for it, but that is giving up one damage, so it's, mm -hmm. it's close. It's technically going up one if things play out correctly. Right. We'll see for Ted Felicetti. We talked about how him in Season 
three here has just been an all-star. We're getting to know him as so we go ahead and right now he's talked about how he has one open win already to his name this season. Mm -hmm. Currently one point out of first here in season three. So from Sugarloaf, Pennsylvania, the 32-year-old, now three open top eights along with a win. Uh, really interesting guy. Is both lives at a funeral home and is a booking agent for really a lot of bands you may have heard of. Uh, not, none that I've heard of, but I'm sure that some of our viewers have heard of some of these bands. Yeah. But right now... I have heard of the Vans Warped Tour. Okay. All right. I know some stuff. <laughs> Uh, Ted, also, I, I know that you are a man that wears many hats. He's Ted? got his own style. Not the same style, but... Yeah, he has multiple different types of hat. He was going with a bowler hat, which he win his invitation in his open win. Yes. A significant departure in his hat game for this weekend. Ted starts out on Blood Crypt, tapped. Zach, no turn one play. That's a pretty good win for Jund. As a he, Tad will actually be the first player with a creature on the board, and it's a copy of Scavenging Ooze. Do I see a Searing Blaze? That'd be pretty big. And Ted's hand looks pretty great here. He has a Tarmogoyf and a Liliana to go with a third land. He's taken zero damage off his lands. Mm -hmm. On the this play. This is great, yeah. Yep. Things are starting very strongly for the Open Champion. Path to Exiles have been sided in on Zach Rafus's side. This is not the primary target for a Path to Exile, though it could come in handy against this Tarmogoyf that's waiting in the wings. And without any creatures just yet, Liliana could really give Zach some trouble here. Well, what Ted just wants, I believe, is just to plus a Liliana. If both players start discarding cards, it's a big win for Ted. Yes. Eidolon of the Great Revel, the play for Zach. That one's going to be weak here. It's going to eat a kill spell. You see, it looks like Liliana and Coligan's command being decided between here for Ted. I like going for the command here. It comfortably lets you attack from this position, get a card out of Zach's hand, and then down the line, your Liliana is likely to be more impactful. Those are the modes. Two damage to Eidolon and to have Zach discard a card, I believe. Yeah. Now with that Eidolon in the graveyard, you can have that hanging out. You can eat it with the Scavenging Ooze, or it's plus two, plus two on Tarmogoyf currently. And a swing of scavenging moves for Ted. Goes back, plays his fourth land. Zach still no plays as of yet. He's played the Eidolon. You know, no, not really getting in damage here as Ted develops the board. Mm -hmm. Chipped in for two when Ted cast a spell with the Eidolon. But this is very far behind the kind of clock that Byrne is trying to assemble. And it looks like another scavenging ooze on Ted's side. He'll play that. And a Tarmogoyf taps out for all three passes. This is very tough for Burn to Race. Mm. We see Creature, Enchantment, Land, and Instant. These are, is a 4-5 Tarmogoyf. Ted at a life total where it's actually, well, maybe it's not impossible. It's going to be a Boros Charm to 11, maybe a Lightning Bolt end step, 8. Theoretically, Zack can kill Ted here. Yeah, he could cast two Burn spells, untap, cast two more. Yeah. It would be all the cards in his hand. Though Ted doesn't have anything in his hand that could meaningly, meaningfully interact with that. I like putting on the pressure here with the clock. He could, you know, gain a life by activating Scavenging Ooze on Isla on the Great, Le Great Rebel, but that's not really making significant inroads here. Yeah, he, he could have made a Liliana to try to go at the cards in Zach's hand, but he's costing himself a lot of turns by doing that. Yes. Whereas right now, he's got a two-turn clock. Potential for some life gain. This is strong. And I do not think Zach's hand has these 15 points of burn we're talking about. But we'll see. Lightning Bolt shoots Ted down to 14. Okay, Lightning Helix. And he's not messing down to around 11. with these scavenging ooze. No, he's, he, he knows he's out. We're going upstairs. Draws. He's heavy on lands here. Now, I was a little surprised to see Lightning Helix come out of the sideboard here. 
Yeah, I, it's entirely possible. You know, we have not seen a non Eidolon creature from Zac yet. All right. Sometimes they go, they board out all their creatures yeah, and just, just go for burn. Want something that he knows will chip in for three damage. On That's the draw, smart. on the draw, I, I kind of like it. On the play, I would, I would probably imagine see some more of these one drops coming back into the deck. So we untap Zach. Land and go. Does not have Ted just yet. Draw for Felicetti is another. Zadi's another terminate. So terminate, terminate Liliana. He's swinging just the oozes, and and this is really smart actually. Yeah, being able to cover something like a Swift Spear or a Goblin Guide by blocking with Tarmogoyf. Yeah, Liliana will plus. And then what I like about it is that it doesn't cost him a turn to do it. Mm -hmm. He still can swing for lethal on the next turn. And he wants to cast this Liliana here. He doesn't want to have to leave up Terminate mana. And yeah, his clock is exactly the same. Zack fetches down to 10 on end step. I guess, well, it might cost Ted a turn. I, 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 I suppose he needs a burn spell to actually close the game here, right? Yeah, his last card's another Terminate. He can't pump a Scavenging Ooze because there's... It a, would shrink the Tarmogoyf by because two. it's an enchantment yeah. creature. Yeah, it's the only creature. So that actually takes away from his clock. Lightning Helix from Zack sh shoots it upstairs. All right. Ted to eight. I believe there's only one card in Zack's hand, though, so we're... And only one white mana available, so he wouldn't be able to double Boros Charm. That was end step. His card's Atarka's Command. I want to say I see a Skullcrack as the second card. Well, this could work. So there's only one point of life came from Ted. So he can only go up to nine. Zach can go. He has six points of burn. Ted will plus the Liliana. Zach's going to empty his hand in response. We see Skullcrack in response. Ted will gain life in response to Skullcrack, and now it'll Tarka's Command in response to that. All right. This will keep Ted at two. Zach just needs the top deck. Any burn spell. Ted, yeah, Ted's down at two. The Tarmogoyf shrinks notably here. It's just instant land now. I believe it's a 2 3 Tarmogoyf. And Ted swings for six. And Zach's gone through a few fetch yeah, lands here. This is all instants and lands. There's a, lo there's a <laughs> lot of burn spells on the deck yet. Yeah, that's only. Yeah, instant land, 2 3. Looks like nine three, lands four? not in the deck currently. Oh, we had a third type. Yeah, we, we exiled the Eidolon here. Uh, so we have instant land. I don't know that I've seen a sorcery. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah, that's a 2-3. He takes seven. Zach goes down to six. Here's a top deck. Can he do it? Can he win? He's not slamming it. I don't think so. Oh, oh no. Oh. Uh, oh, Swift Spear. No. <laughs> for, for one, we're on to a third game. That's heartbreaking. Oh, oh so close. Goblin guy would have done this. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it had to be Swift Spear. Oh, oh okay. So Ted, at one life, takes the second game as we're going to go to a third decider between the two. <laughs> Jeez. I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's, that was a... <laughs> I just feel mm, so bad for yeah. Zach. That's such a roller well, coaster. Well, we don't even think, we, were, we weren't even sure those were in the deck. Right. I guess the guides might be gone, but the Swiss Spears would be in. Well, that would be particularly bad feeling for <laughs> Zach. <laughs> oh. Wow, okay. Players are going to get ready for game number three. Zach looks like he can do some reboarding now that he's going to be on the play. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, he... He does that. We're going to go ahead and talk. So those of you wondering, we have about our next fi third and final Invitational of the season is coming up at the beginning of December. But one of the things that we've been doing now in Season 3 is we're in the thick of things. We are now giving away copies of our most recent Invitational token, and that is the Liam Lonergan token. Now, if you haven't gotten one of these, we are still giving those away uh, all season here in Season 3. This is, of course, Liam capping a perfect 9-0 run in the Season 2 Invitational on his way to becoming the champion his 9-0 run was with elves, and then he has his likeness on the elf token. So that is given away at all of the opens in Season 3, all of the classics in Season 3. And if you can't make it out to one of those, you can get them by placing an order of $5 from StarCityGames.com. It's live right now in the store, so there's no reason not to get one of these. Or if you're really an elves player, you probably need about 10, because oh, yeah. that's what elves do. <laughs> so get those available, and they'll be available all the way up through our next Invitational, when, of course, we crown our, new our newest champion. What's the most elf tokens you've ever controlled? It's a lot. Um, <laughs> 
in the Lorwyn block, I played this the block deck that was the Elvish Promenade. Uh, oh, the, okay. It's like Hunting okay. Triad Promenade, uh, Heritage Druid, and so they, a lot. I'm sh I, I imagine that I played games of limited with Imperius Perfect, where I made upwards of eight. But I think that you're gonna do a lot better than me with. I bet it's it's got to be at least twenty. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So you need quite a lot. This I, is uh, a deck that some people play in Popper as well. Uh, you lose a number of the token makers. But uh, yeah, some of the best token makers are are uncommon. So the ones that make. Not best, but the ones that make the biggest number. Right. Like, Promenade doubles them. That one's pretty dumb. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm kind of struggling to think of, like, because a Hunting Triad's an uncommon. Yeah, that one makes three. Dwinin's Elite's an uncommon. Uh, Lissalana Huntmaster is yes, actually that, makes yes. a ton. Okay, yeah, they do play that card. And that one's a common. Yeah, it only makes one every time you play an elf. That's not bad. That was a fixture of my Popper Cube for a while. Uh, the elves did not pan out as a archetype in, you know, the, the Rolling Thunder. <laughs> in the all-kill spell deck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Pestilence had, was pretty good against the deck. If you had maybe seven <laughs> Huntmasters in your cube, I bet it could be good. That would be, that would be solid. But that's not how cubes work. All right, game number three, Zach is back on the play. And interesting, he may have boarded in some of the more one-drops again as he's back on the play. Yeah, that would not surprise me at all to see that kind of transition transition from play to draw. In particular, with a lot of Ted's answer costing two mana, it terminates abrupt decays. Uh, even if he does not have one of his fast lands, his Copper Line Gorge or Black Cleave Clips, he'll take some damage just to cast a Lightning Bolt on turn one in some of his hands. Zach has kept. Ted's thinking about it. It's that dilemma when you look at a Jund hand and you think, I don't. I, I doubt, don't think this will win, but I don't know if it's worse than six. Nothing beats rock. So Zach, on the play, starts with fetch land into Sacred Foundry. Looks like we are going to see a one drop. Now the question is, is it a Lava Spike? Is it a Goblin Guide or a Swift Spear? Goblin Guide. If it left the deck, it's back in now. Mm -hmm. Swinging. Showing up at a very appropriate time. This time gives Ted a card. He gets... A Twilight Mire goes to 18. Goblin Guide did not give Ted anything free the first in game one. And with Swamp, Basic Swamp Inquisition, Ted, I think, will get to keep the extra card. And Ted picked up a Lightning Bolt here, though. No free untapped red source, so he has to leave the Goblin Guide around. And this looks like a recap of game one. We Inquisition Zach and see he's kept a one lander again. His hand is two Boros Charms. A lightning bolt, a lava spike, and a lightning helix. And the bolt will be the take. And this is a sort of game where if Ted brought in Fulminator Mage, that could really bust this open. <laughs> Big land by Zach. He hits it on turn two. Well, all right. <laughs> that was, and I think he needed that this time as he draws Ted another card, Raging Ravine. Ted's hand's great this time around. He's got lightning bolt. He's got Kitchen Finks, Fulminator Mage. Goblin Guy's giving him cards, but not the lands that matter. Um, free red source. He has these wooded foothills. Uh, Jund, not finding basic mountain in this list. Just swapping no. forest. Oh wow, there's no. You're right. So he plays wooded foothills, and at shocking for the land, it's oftentimes that Ted won't even do it. You see, he plays foothills and then discards. Saw a little bit of confusion there. Uh, when your opponent tells you they're going to discard, that means that if you agree to it, you have pass priority to the you end of turn. You can't say, okay, discard, and then say, I'll fetch on end step. Yep. Like, no, so no, end step's gone. Todd discarded his card. Zach tried to crash his fetch land. Ted says, no, no. Um, the, the points are unlikely to matter. Yeah, but just something to be aware of as a player. So now Zach takes some extra damage. Well, turns out he just gets a basic instead. Yeah, this is fine. And I believe I did spot a Fulminator Mage in Ted's hand. Zach fetching a basic land here might not be the best find. A second uh, Sacred Foundry might end up being what he wanted to find. Oh, right, because he has two, he has two Boros Charms in hand. Yes. And, Ooh, and he's casting a non-white spell. Well, he's going for a big play here. He's going for Swift Spear plus Lava Spike. So Ted gets spikes down to 13, prowess triggers. Here's a swing for four. He's got two cards in hand. They're both Boros Charm. Mm -hmm. Both players know it. Ted can take three damage to cast a Lightning Bolt here if he wants to. Abrupt Decay is his top card. Yeah, is he going to cast the Bolt? I, I think he does anyway. Yes. Yeah, he'll go down to 10. This is neat because he has to cast Fulminator Mage now? Oh. 
Maybe, no, maybe he still plays Sphinx. Sphinx is so good. He knows about two Boros charms. Fulmir Mage stands to gain him so much more life. Gets Blood Crypt. Goes to 10. Can't cast fi Kitchen Sphinx. Oh, he has okay. Twilight Mire. He has Twilight Mire. So if he has Mire in hand, yeah, he left, can still do Left it. his options open. Right, because he got the Twilight Mire for free on turn one. Right. Bolts down the Swift Spear. Takes two. Goes to eight. Yeah, I mean, I see your point about not wanting to go to full, like, when you're at eight and your opponent's hand is two Boros Charms. Feeling uncertain about the game makes sense. Yes. Um, playing Finks, though, is, is almost the same amount of life gain because you gain two off the Finks and then you can block Goblin Guy. Sure. So, so you're gaining four, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what he's going to do. Goes okay. up to ten from Finks. I think you're right. The Fulminator's got to come. I mean, he's got to stop the, the second Boros Charm at the very least. Right. Okay. Or maybe he can't. Well, Zach plays a fetch land. So that, that's one of the rare instances where drawing a land. Pretty good for the burn deck here. And actually, what I like then is on Ted's line, by playing it this way, like had he played the other way with land destruction, he would have gotten really blown out by that draw. True. True. Absolutely right. So now he plays another Kitchen Finks. He's going to go to 12. I mean, he's still at a rough spot, right? Because he's at a virtual four. Yeah. You don't attack with Kitchen Finks here if you feel safe about your position. Yeah. Boros Charm puts Ted down... To, I believe it's 8. We'll confirm here. Yeah, up to 12 from Finks. Going to be down to 8 off Boros Charm. I assume we're not double striking the Goblin Guide to kill the, the Kitchen Finks. Yeah, Finks's. that would be an ambitious line. I would even say a horrible one. <laughs> uh, so Zach bumped his deck a little bit when he cast that Boros Charm there. Sure. This card was flipped. Maybe you could okay. have seen it. That's the discussion you see having here right now. Yeah, the judge will resolve it. Usually it means he'll re-randomize the deck and issue Zach a warning. Yep. Verify nothing was scribed to the bottom so you can maintain anything like that that may have happened. So Ted's remaining hand, he's got a Liliana, a Fulminator Mage, a Scavenging Ooze. Now, if he can find a kill spell, it actually is good for him here. Be not just because it kills the guide, but because of the King Kill Kitchen Finks. Yes. Just a nice little gain to life. Not quite healing solve, but sometimes good enough. I'll be interested to see how Ted plays this fetch land. He knows that he's at, because Zach has a Boros Charm in hand. That hmm. puts him to four. I want mana if I'm Ted, but I'm not sure how badly I want it. I assume he'll hang around with this. Um, unless he needs a second red source for any reason because Basic Forest is probably the land he wants to find, and if that's what he's looking for, leave it up until you need the mana. Zach passes the turn. So Zach's hand is currently Boros Charm, Lightning Helix, Lightning Helix. It's a lot of white mana that he needs. Be a shame if something were to, to happen to that Sacred Foundry. Okay, Zach can still cast Runner Runner Boros Charm because he has the yeah. Wooded Foothills. Right, let's just verify that he has a second Sacred Foundry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's got, got three, three of them. So maybe Ted goes the other line and just goes Liliana plus? Yeah. All right, sure. I, I, I can't cut you off white. Maybe I can. I mean, Zach can't cast all the cards fast enough. He will, he, lo he will lose one, maybe two of them. Mm -hmm. Fink swings. Zach down to 10. And that's the play Ted's going to make. Here's Liliana. And Ted not able to represent something like a lightning bolt on his own kitchen, Finks by committing to this line and not cracking the wooded foothills. Uh, because there's no basic mountain that he can find. Oh, I like this. Liliana makes target player so sacrifice a creature. So he sacrifices his own kitchen finks. In Spicy. response, now on that step, Ted, Zach's going to lightning helix Ted. So, And no redirect to Liliana. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's not what this game is about. Ted down to seven. Helix and Bolt, a and that's going to do it. So, yeah, that, there was a lot, some fast stuff happening there. So Ted went up to 10 with, with the, the Finks, yep. and it was end step. Boros Charm, Boros down, to Charm six. down to 6. Bolt, Helix, 0. Yep. Game and match, Zach Rafus. I'd be really curious to find out the exact Game 2 configuration. Yeah. It, it seems like he did go down on one drops. And, and wisely so. I mean, it, it paid off. Mm -hmm. It was just the one top tech that's Yeah, he was so close to getting game two. And it's going to be Burn moving into the 5 0 bracket. And I got to say, I, I really thought Ted's play was strong there. Yes. Zach's was as well. And 
And you saw Ted giving complete precedence to trying to get Zach's life total down, but mm -hmm. that Lightning Bolt top deck, so good right there. And this is something that you see a lot with these three-color decks in Modern. People ask me a lot about the basic mountain in Grixis Delver.